Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly and let's take a look at the index function in Excel. The first thing that I'm going to do is explain you what the index function is and how it works and then let's take a look at one or two applications of index. So let's say we have a couple of names here uh, and we have three months of sales or whatever numbers of these salesmen here. Um, and the index function, I'm going to apply the index function on this data to pull out uh, certain information of the salesman for any particular of the months. The index function actually accepts three inputs. So the first input is where are you looking or your array. The second input is what is your row number or and the third input is what is your column number. Pretty simple. I'm going to write equals to index. The first thing is an array. Array means a set of cells, a range of cells. I'm going to pick up the array. And the second input is what is your row number. So let's say I want to pull out the record for Mossy. Right, so row number for Mossy is going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to write 4 here. And the column number uh, could be, let's say I want to pick up the records for March. So 1, first column, second column, and then third column. So I'm going to write number 3 here. Close the bracket, press enter, and I'm going to get 165 for Mossy. So this is 165, Mossy's record for the month of February. I could probably change that. I could probably find out record for Natasha for the month of March. So if my range is starting from here, Natasha is on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, seventh position. That means seventh row number. And uh, what is your column number if you want to record for March? So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So uh, this is going to be seventh row and the fourth column. And this is going to give me 140. Let's see that. This is absolutely fine. Now, the problem is that although the index function accepts the row number and the column number as the last two inputs, you cannot be putting the row numbers and the column numbers manually, right? You, you need something to automate that. So what I'm going to do is apply the index function with the use of match function so that I can generate the column number, sorry, the row number and the column number automatically. So what the first thing that I'm going to do is write the names or write the name of the salesman that I want to search for. So let's say I'm, I want to search for Susan could be any salesman doesn't matter and I'm also going to write the the month that I want to search for so let's say I want to search for the month of Feb I could probably change that um, so now what I want to do is I want to find the position number of Susan that Susan in this range is kept on which position so I'm going to say equals to match match what match Susan and match it where match it in this array uh, lock that and please give me an exact match three parts of match match what match this whatever name is kept here matched where match it in this range and uh, please give me an exact match so zero for that um, always remember the match gives you the position number so it's going to tell you that Susan out of this uh, data set is kept on the third position so one two and three so it's going to give you number three similarly I'm going to find the position number of Feb so match, match what, match this, match it, sorry, match it where, match it here, lock that, and please give me an exact one. This time I'm doing a horizontal match, and I'm trying to find that if I start counting from here, where is the month of Feb kept? So it's going to count one, two, three, Feb is matched with Feb, whatever is written here, and it's going to give you three. That means that Feb is kept on the third position. So it's going to give you three. Now I'm going to write the index function equals to index. My range is this, lock that. What is your row number? My row number is this. What is your column number? Your column number is this. Close the bracket, press enter, and you get, you're going to get 120. So this is actually finding the column number through the match formula. And this is actually finding the column number, sorry, the row number through the match formula. So let's say if I change Susan to Peter, now Peter is kept in the last here, but I want to find out which row number it is. So counting from the first cell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Peter is kept in the eighth position. This is going to trigger the match formula to give you number eight here. And uh, as soon as you get eight here, your index formula will jump to this for the month of Feb, right? So you see that? Now your eighth row, is driven by the match formula and that eight is actually going inside your index formula right up here all right 
So th that was one application of index. Let's take a look at another application of index. So what we have, what sorry, what we have here is uh, a set of names and the IDs. Let's say there were there were some problem with the IDs, or you wanted to find out what names are these, and your boss gives you a couple of IDs that please give me the names of these IDs. Okay, these IDs are already in here, and you want to find out the respective name of these IDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the index formula to find out. So I'm going to write equals to index, right? The index formula is asking me for an array. I specify the array here, lock that. Now it's next asking a row number. So the row number is go going to be uh, what is going to be the row number of one, one, two, double eight. So this is the row number. So row number one and row number two. So I want to find it. It should give me Susan here. So if I write two here and I close the bracket, I press enter, although I will get Susan, but the two is manual and I want to find a way to automate that. Right. The next time I want to find one nine eight one six. And if I try and look at manually, the row number here is what I think the row number here is seven and uh, it should actually give me Peter, but then I would have to write seven manually in the index function. I would have to do something like that, right, to get Peter. And I cannot be writing the formula manually for n number of times. So I have to find a way in which I get to know the row number for these IDs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the match formula. So let's write it here. So row number, oops, row number is going to be equals to match match what match this ID, whatever is kept in this cell, match it where match it in this range, lock that. And please give me an exact match three parts of match match what match where an exact match press enter, this is going to give you the same row number two. And then you drag this formula down It's going to give you row number seven. Right? So you have the row numbers here. Now I'm going to use these row numbers in my index formula. So equals to index. Uh, index has got three parts. The first part is your array. So my array is this array. Lock the array. And uh, what's your what's your row number? My row number is number two. Whatever row number I have found out through the match formula. Although you can write the match formula in the same index formula here as well, but breaking the formula into two parts actually gives me more comfort uh, in distributing the logic into two parts. So that I know that if I have an error, do I have an error in the match formula or do I have an error in the index formula? So it's a good practice to actually break down formulas into multiple parts. Close the bracket, press enter. This is going to give you Susan. And when I drag this down, it's going to give me Peter. Now, even if I change the ID here to let's say one, four, six hundred. Now one, four, six hundred is the ID for Danny. The first thing that the match formula is going to do is find the correct row number. So one, two, three, four. This is going to give you four here. And then the index formula is going to pull out the fourth record from this range. So this will update to number four, and then this will automatically update to the name Danny, right? The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that um, our index formula, when I started teaching you that, uh, I told you that index formula has got three parts. The first part was array, the second part was row number, and the third part was column number. If your array is a single dimensional array. That means it only has a single column here. Do you see? I only have B column and B column, although there are multiple number of rows, but there is no extra column here. Then it's not a mandatory thing for you to write the column number. You can avoid writing the column number. But if your index formula has got multiple number of rows and multiple number of columns, then writing the column number becomes important and your index formula is going to give you an error if you do not write the uh, the column number, right? All right, so that was uh, the index formula. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or on YouTube and read all our blogs at coldly.co.in. Thank you so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.